Hi everyone, I'm Gonhua, a PhD student at Synergy Lab, Georgia Tech. The part that I'm going to be covering today is compiling and running Maestro. So I hope it's the fun part for you guys. First, I'm going to show some resources over here. Of course, we do have some tutorial websites, Maestro websites, and then I've listed some related publications over here, including the Maestro paper itself. So please, if you're interested in, please take a look. This is a brief recap of Maestro. I'm not gonna go too much detail into it because I hope you've already understood those concepts. But the parts that I'm gonna be focusing over here is the inputs of Maestro. So Maestro should get the information about hardware resources, DNA layer, and mapping as their inputs so that it can do their own thing to get like buffer analysis, knock analysis, and runtime analysis. So how do we specify those inputs? That's the thing that we have to focus on in this lecture, I mean, tutorial. Harder, so to do so, we do need two input files, one hardware file and the second mapping file. One thing to note is that the mapping file we're going to introduce, I mean, include both DNA layer information and mapping information. This is some dependencies for Maestro. And since we don't really have that much dependencies, hope you can just build, I mean, get the source codes from GitHub and build from the scratch. You can do this, git clone and scones, or if you have any environment issue while you're building from the source codes, we also provide a Docker image for this Michael 2020 tutorial. So please go to the Docker hub, I mean, the link below, and then try to down, I mean, start from there. If you have built Maestro, now you can just run Maestro. This is the a command that you can execute and let me explain one by one. So as I explained earlier, there are two input files that you have to provide as a command line argument, one hardware file and the second mapping file. And also there are some command line options, for example, print reserves, print reserves CSV file, and also print log file. If you open run example script in the top directory, you're going to be able to see those commands. Now, let me try to explain the hardware file, which is the simpler one compared with the mapping file. In the left, we showed the abstract hardware uh, model that Maestro is assuming. And the right side, this is the actual hardware file that you have to create. As you can see, there are, they are just configuration, including number of PEs, L1 size, L2 size, knock bandwidth, and knock number of hops. We are planning to extend to add more knobs over here. Also, you have to specify mapping file to run Maestro. Mapping file is a little more complicated than hardware file, but it's not too much complicated. So let me explain one by one. So imagine that you want to create a mapping file for ResNet 50 and specific comp layer comp two underscore one underscore two. So as you can see, it has three by three by three filter. I mean, 64 of them. And then the input size is 56 by 56 by uh, three. So what should we do? First, we have to specify the DNA layer. You can put any name for layer, but you have to specify the right type as con convolution and you have to specify the right stride and you also need to specify those dimensions for convolution layer for specifying dimensions we are using the conventions on the left bottom so please be familiar with those uh, dimension conventions now the second part of the mapping file is data flow over here, we are trying to use KCPWS data flow, which means that K dimension and C dimension 
we're going to be spatially mapped and the entire data, data flow itself are going to be the weight stationary. So simply speaking, this is similar to MVDLA1. I'm not going to explain too much detail about data flow. If you have some ambiguity, please take a look at the previous tutorials again. Okay, with uh, layer information and data flow, we can have whole mapping file. And this will gonna be the second input of the Maestro with hardware file. Now I'm gonna be introducing a mapping file for gem. So gem refers general matrix matrix multi multiplication, which we're gonna multiply matrix A with matrix B to get matrix C. We are using conventional M and K dimensions over here, M by K matrix A, K by N matrix B, and M by C matrix, I mean, M, M by N matrix C. It's pretty much simple, I mean, similar to the comp layer, but please note that you have to specify type as gem and then specify the dimension as M and K. And the data flow is something that you have to create. Now, let me start the demo and I'm going to be start from the Maestro website. Okay, now I'm going to introduce Maestro website. So this is the Maestro website, maestro.ace.gatech.edu. We do provide some information and news publications and etc. So if you're interested in, please take a look. For this tutorial, I'm going to introduce the documentation tab. So if you click over here, we do have some documentations so that people can take a look and get some information. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering installation and one and research analysis part. So let's begin with installation. To install Maestro, you can either uh, building from the source using Git clone, and also you can use the uh, Docker image that we provide for Micro 2020 tutorial. For the sake of time, we're going to use the Docker image. So let's try to open this up. And I assume that you've already installed Docker. So if you did not, please download and install it. We do provide some readme files over here. The first step that we have to do is, of course, pull the Docker image. And again, for the sake of time, I've already downloaded over here. So image is up to date. We are good to run the Docker image to create a container. Something that you have to note is that since the container will not gonna save any information after exiting if you don't specify the mount directory, I recommend you to specify the directory that you want to mount if you want to mount something. Over here, I'm gonna mount, let's say, uh, desktop temp docker results. And then in the container in the image, I recommend you to use home slash uh, results. And then we also specified 8,000, 8, I mean 8888 8, 8, 8 ports to use Jupyter in the future. So if you don't want to use Jupyter, you don't have to specify the ports. Now we are in the Docker container and please activate the Maestro environment. So Maestro environments includes all the dependencies and also we already installed TensorFlow and PyTorch that we're gonna be using when we want to use the front end of Maestro. Let's first move into the Maestro folder and see what's in there. As you can see, we've already provided, we've already providing Maestro binary file and also we do have run scripts over here. So you can quickly check whether it's running or not. 
by just running one script and then it we're gonna generate all the command line outputs and also this CSV file including all the statistics. Now let's try to create a mapping from either TensorFlow and PyTorch. Of course you can create all the mappings by yourself, but imagine that you have to implement like all the 50 layers in Resin 50. It would be so tedious. So we provide some script which extract all the information from the library. So first move to tools dot front end on I mean, the slash front end. As you can see we do provide some scripts over here. And first we're gonna run framework to model file maestro. So what this script we're gonna do is nothing but just extracting DNA layer information from the existing library. For example, if you specify if you specify PyTorch, then it will gonna use Torch Vision. If you specify Keras, it will gonna use TensorFlow Keras applications. There are a lot of options that you can just use. In this tutorial, we're gonna we're gonna use We're going to be executing uh, the script using PyTorch and Emphasize and model as mobile and v 2 and then we're going to be saving the out file as dnn underscore model.m. The out file we're going to be saved in uh, Maestro directory under data under model. So you can just open it up to see whether it's extracted correctly. So as you can see, mobile net is extracted and all the layers which Maestro supports is included over here. So for mobile net, we do provide uh, depthwise convolutions and convolution layers. However, we haven't put data flow in the mapping yet. So to do so, To do so, you have to run this script. And let's try to see what's going on there. So model file to mapping, you can specify the data flow that you want to put in the DNM model file. And we do, I mean, of course you can put by yourself, but for simplicity, we do provide some templates. For example, KCPWS means K dimension and C dimension we're gonna be partitioned and that it will going to be waste stationary. Another one like row stationary one is something like iris. Oh, also you can think KCP waste stationary one is very similar to MVDLA one. All right, now let's try to run the script. So mapping file, we're going to be created as we specified the out file name, we're gonna be out.m. Again, it we're gonna be created under data slash mapping. Oh, and then we can just open it up to see what's going on there. Yep, as I mentioned, now not only the layer information but also data flow is included for each layer. And as I as we specified, it's K C partitioned and then it's very stationary data flow. So it's similar to the MVDLA like data flow. So as you can see, all the layer now has the data flow. Now, since we have the mapping, we can just run it. To do so, we have to go back to the Maestro folder and then we're gonna change the run script to use the mapping that we've just created. So change the parameter as out.m and then save it and run it. This will generate all the command line results again and then also it will create out the CSV. As you already noticed, maybe, the name of the CSV file will gonna be the same as your mapping file. Of course, you can open this out the CSV file using Vim, but it's too hard to read, so let's use the uh, numbers. 
to do so we have to move this out the csv file to the folder that we mounted so it we're going to be research folder and it was tmp slash docker slash wizards so out the csv file is over here okay if you open it up you're going to see that the all the layers in the rows that we have just extracted and then the statistics were going to be up here show up as the on the columns for example let's look at what should we look at okay so let's look at average number of utilized PEs. even though we are using 256 pe hardware the average number of utilized PEs varies depending on which layer it's running and also runtime we're going to vary a lot of course you can use this csv file and see what's going on we also we created a jupyter notebook script to show you what's going on more precisely to do so we need to run the jupyter notebook from the docker image that's why we we use the port forwarding 8888 beforehand okay now jupyter is running and maybe you need this token so please copy it just in case you need it and open your browser access to localhost 8888 oh i didn't end up using the token and let's go into tools folder and then you can see jupyter notebook and there are some data some csv files that we've already uploaded you can also create those csv files by yourself it's in data slash mapping file folder i mean i can show you over here so if you go data slash mapping we already created a lot of uh, mapping files so if you want you can just change the run script and then and then generate all the csv files that we've already uploaded over there for the sake of time we're going to just use pre-uploaded one and let's go back to tools jupyter notebook and maestro output analysis So using this IPython file, we're going to show you some fun things using the Maestro results. What we're going to do over here is that we're going to compare two different data flows, two different DNM models, and two different hardware models to see what's going on. First, we're going to read the CSV file so that we can use the data next we're going to compare two different data flow on the same dnn and hardware to see how data flow affects to the performance or to whatever statistics that you're interested in over here we're going to use a uh, waste stationary nvda like, like one and then another data flow as row stationary which is iris one i mean similar to iris one and we run both of them on resident 50 using 256 PEs. The metric that we're going to focus at this point is PE utilization. So the number of PE utilization varies a lot layer by layer. And one thing to note is that since MVDLA is paralyzing C dimension, if you see the first layer, which only has three C dimension, I mean, three, I mean, C dimension as three, it's utilize, I mean, PE utilization is very small. However, row station one, eyeless like one, has a higher number of utilized PEs for the first layer, but on average, it is, I mean, lower for other layers. This is one metric, but we cannot say which one is better than the another. Let's look at another metric to see more, to get some more insights. So now we're gonna be looking at energy. 
as you can imagine, each layer we're gonna have different. I mean, we're gonna consume different amount of energy, and as you can see, the last layer, fully connected layer, we're gonna consume a lot for both. I I mean, Nvidia like one and I Iris like one. Uh, one thing to note is that the residual net does not incur like a lot of. I mean that much energy for NVDA like one, while for Iris like one, it's comparably larger, higher. I mean, even though it's still small. Next, we're gonna compare two different DNNs with the same data flow and hardware. So even though we use the same data flow and hardware, if the DNN configuration, for example, if you have big layer, huge layer, or something like that, you're gonna have different uh, runtime, we're going to have different energy, right? So over here, we're going to be focusing on runtime. We chose ResNet 50 and MobileNet to compare. We use the same data flow, NVDA like one, and then we use the same number of PEs and the same hardware configuration. As you can expect, MobileNet is like lighter version, so it consumes way less, I mean, over here, it its runtime is way smaller compared with Resident 50. Finally, we're gonna compare two different hardwares with same data flow and DNS. So even though you have the same data flow and even though you have the same DNA, if the hardware configuration is different, the results may be different. Over here, we just increase the number of PEs so that how so that we can see how it, it affects to the results. Again, we're gonna be looking at the runtime. So this is the runtime graph for ResNet 50 NVIDIA like one, but the upper one has 256 PEs while the bottom one has 1024 PEs. And as expected, the runtime has been decreased for, for the bigger hardware, but Again, we cannot guarantee that it will gonna be showing the same uh, parents again and again. So you can keep increasing the number of PEs to see when it shows the diminishing returns. That That's something that you can do by yourself. So this is it. We have covered, uh, we have seen how different data flow, how different hardware, how different uh, DNA model affects to the to to runtime energy number of utilized PEs and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I wish you enjoyed my tutorial and please stay tuned for for the future updates. So we are planning to support for nonlinear operations besides like comp layer and fully connected layers and etc. And also, we are trying to add more knock topologies for like distribution and reductions, including bus, tree, and etc. Also, instead of having like hard coded front end, we are trying to use MLIR integration so that we can provide smooth integration with high level frameworks. Again, this is the resources, and this is the end of my tutorial. Thank you.